Hi, I'm Dr. Mike, and uh, I'm here to talk about one of my passions for the last little more than a year, uh, which has been bread making. I, uh, I'm an expert in neuroradiology, which is far from bread making, uh, but uh, I, bread making has been one of my passions and hobbies for the last year, and I have made many, many hundreds of loaves in the past year, and uh, I figured, and I've had many of my friends and neighbors and family members ask me, uh, to teach them to make bread. So I figured I'd make a couple of videos in order to teach how I do it. So anyway, hopefully this will be a lot of fun for you and it will become a passion for you like it is for me. Uh, and uh, and uh, hope it'll be a lot of fun. First of all, uh, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to create four or five different videos and each video is going to have a, a very specific purpose. The purpose of this video is going to be simply to talk about bread uh, talk about the, uh, the, a little bit about the history of bread, and finally to introduce some of the basic equipment that you might need in bread making. Okay, so uh, the first thing I wanted to say is bread's been given a bad rap. Uh, right now, the, the, the popular thing uh, is to jump on the bandwagon and stay as far away from bread as we possibly can, uh, and uh, it, so much so that actually 30 about 30% of the population now claims some sort of gluten sensitivity and 40% of the population actually thinks that it would be wise for them to avoid gluten protein. Uh, gluten protein is not a bad protein and, and there's nothing inherently evil about it, but let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, uh, bread has been the staple of diets in this world for about 6,000 years. It's thought that somewhere in the Fertile Crescent, which is over near Egypt and uh, where Israel is in Syria, uh, during uh, about 4000 BC, that, uh, that somebody discovered bread making and natural leavening of the bread. And ever since that, it, ever since that time, it has been the staple food for all diets and people have tolerated it very, very well. It's only been in the last 150 years that, uh, that we've been using a refined yeast, and that refined yeast, um, I, so uh, first of all, let me say that I'm, I'm no uh, dietary expert, I'm an expert in neuroradiology, but let me just give you my opinion, is that uh, refined yeast doesn't allow, uh, doesn't allow, um, for the breakdown of the gluten protein and doesn't allow our body to break it down and therefore people have a hard time eating it. I'm gonna make an analogy with um, lactose intolerance. So lactose is a two ring sugar. And, um, and when we eat that lactose, our body has to break down that two ring sugar in, into separate rings. And when it breaks it down into separate rings, then our body can digest it. Okay, in order for uh, the body to break it down, it has to have an enzyme that cleaves the protein. That enzyme is called lactase. If we don't make enough lactase in our bodies, then we have a problem digesting lactose sugar, and, uh, and therefore we have dietary problems. I feel like there's a, a very similar analogy to bread eating, and my feeling is, is that with a natural starter, uh, the natural bacteria and yeast in the starter helps break down that gluten protein and allows our body to more easily digest uh, the bread. Uh, and again, I think that the problem that's arisen for so many people in the last 150 years has, have, has come because we're using this instant yeast that doesn't allow for that same breakdown. Um, so anyway, that is, that is uh, one of the things that I think is, um, is important to mention. The second thing is, is that uh, bread is simply made up of three separate ingredients, flour, water, and salt, and that's it. The, the interesting thing is if we were to take the ingredients of flour, water, and salt, and we were to eat them separately, or put the water and the salt together and just try to eat them, uh, it might sustain us for a couple of days. But if we ferment them and create a bread out of them, this will sustain us indefinitely. So it becomes a very nutritious food uh, that we can talk about. So it's gonna, be, it's gonna be kind of fun. Let me briefly talk to you about some of the equipment that I've found helpful when making bread. I first wanna say it doesn't take a lot of equipment to make bread 
Uh, you do need an oven and you do need flour, water, and salt, but it doesn't take a lot of other equipment. That being said, some of the equipment that you can get makes bread making a lot more fun. Let me talk to you about some of the things that I have uh, acquired over the last year that's made bread making a lot more fun. First of all, um, probably the most essential item uh, that you'll need will be some sort of an electronics kitchen scale. These can be very, very inexpensive and they're very accurate and they're a way to, to make the recipe perfect each time. And I, and I highly recommend that you use a kitchen scale. It turns out that if you're using measuring cups to make bread, uh, one of the things that can happen is that uh, you can change the volume of flour by up to 25% or more, just be depending on how you pack the flour into, into a measuring cup. So I, I highly recommend that you use a scale. Uh, the other thing that's important would be um, a proving bowl. And proving bowls are important, of course, because uh, dough needs time to rest and to prove and to, to ferment. And so it's nice to have a good set of bowls. You have to cover these bowls so that the dough doesn't dry out. You can do that with some cellophane wrap. You can do that with a towel. I prefer to have a lid that fits over the bowl, and so those can be very, very helpful. The other thing is, is that I encourage you to make bread uh, out on the counter and uh, knead it. It's a lot of fun to knead, uh, uh, knead bread, and it's kind of some of the art is in the kneading of the bread and the, the formation of the dough. That being said, if you're making a lot of dough or for ease, uh, it is very nice to have a KitchenAid or a, or a, a stand mixer. Uh, now a stand mixer should come with a dough hook. This is what a dough hook looks like. And uh, it can be very, very useful in kneading the bread for you. And we'll show you how to, to make uh, bread with the, uh, with the, with the stand mixer. Uh, the other thing that is important is once you've made your dough and you have fermented the dough in a proving, uh, in a proving bowl, then you're going to actually prove the dough in a, in a basket or some sort of a, 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 a form that allows the dough to keep its shape, okay? These baskets are called bannetons and you can do it in a basket, you can do it in a big ceramic bowl that's lined with a tea towel, you can do it in several different things, but I really like these bannetons because it gives the, the uh, bread a beautiful look and uh, they're very inexpensive as well. So those are helpful. Another couple of items that are very, very useful would be uh, dough scrapers and bench scrapers. Very useful in getting the dough out uh, after you have uh, put it in the bowl. Very useful in dividing the, uh, the dough. And I use these all the time and I don't know what I'd do without them. So really, really important to have these items. A couple of other items to consider before the dough goes into the oven, uh, depending on the recipe you're using, if you're using a no-knead bread, you might need to spray a, catch, a cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, and I have found that canola spray oil uh, works the best. I've tried it with avocado oil, we've tried it with other things, we've tried uh, rubbing olive oil into the, cast, uh, the, the enameled uh, Dutch oven, and it doesn't tend to work very well, but this canola uh, oil works really well, this canola spray. The other thing that you might need is some parchment paper and uh, parchment paper helps uh, uh, to, to line the Dutch ovens and uh, it's useful to have. Um, another couple of items, when you take the bread and uh, when you take it out of the banneton and you're ready to cook it, what's going to happen in the oven is the bread is going to expand and it, uh, it will tear as it expands. And so uh, in order for it to tear where you want it to tear, it's important to actually score the bread. And we score the bread with a razor called a bread lame. And here's my bread lame. And, uh, and again, very important to keep a sharp bread lame or a very, very sharp knife in order to score your bread and allow it to have that beautiful look when you're done. Um, finally, you want your bread to be cooked perfectly. Turns out that's not very hard to do, but that being said, sometimes uh, you're not quite sure if the internal temperature is just right. And I have found that having an instant read thermometer uh, is very, very important. I can open up the oven, put the thermometer into the bread, and very, very quickly see what the temperature is without letting all of the heat out of the oven. So an instant read thermometer can be very, very helpful. And finally, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about 
was having, oh, well, two more things I want to talk about. One is these enamel Dutch ovens. These enamel Dutch ovens, um, I think I've got six of them, come in a variety of uh, shapes and sizes. And when you're making a no-knead bread, bread, they can be very, very helpful. And the bread it will actually take the form of these enamel Dutch ovens. When you're making an artisan boule or an artisan loaf, they're also very helpful. And why are they helpful? Well, they're helpful because in order to get that thick crust around the bread that crunches when you, uh, when you bite into it, uh, you have to actually have a thin layer of moisture around the dough as you're cooking it. You can get that thin layer of moisture in a couple of different ways. You can take a spray bottle and spray the dough as you put it into the oven, and that can work. You can also put a pan of boiling water underneath the bread as it cooks, and that, that steam will come up and coat the dough, and that will help create that thick, uh, that thick uh, crust. Or you can, do, uh, you can put it in an enamel Dutch oven with a lid on it, and the moisture from the bread itself will come out and coat the dough, and it will, uh, and it will allow for that moisture and that crust to form. So you cook it half the time with the, with the uh, lid on, and then half the time with the lid off. Uh, the other thing that you can do is transfer your dough onto a baking stone like this, and that baking stone um, is very, very important so that you don't scorch the bottom of the, uh, of the bread, which you can sometimes do with these enamel Dutch ovens. So anyway, uh, we'll get started with our next video, but hope that's helpful. And if you uh, need a link to any of these uh, items, it'll be on our blog. The other thing is, is I hope you have fun with this. I think bread making is, is a super fun uh, hobby, and I hope it becomes a passion for you like it is for me.